Hello, good evening. How is everybody doing? Welcome to another live show, unscripted, apart from a few prompts. So you don't know where the old coach might go, but we're going to talk about a fascinating topic. So linked to Zone 2, lots of people have been asking me questions recently on Zone 2. Hey coach, how do I develop Zone 2? Do I use power? Do I use heart rate? Do I use what type of weather it is? How high the sun is in the air? How many hours of the day I'm awake? Should I face my bike north, south, east, west? Should I put a compass up my arse? All these sites, are qu all these types of questions, you know the usual type. Okay, so the thing is, what I wanted to do is to spend a few sessions, not just on YouTube, but for those of you who are now follow me inside my school platform, because we will open up the university section. Who sends posh coach? Will I get an invite? Yes, of course you will. However, there is so much to talk about in terms of mitochondrial efficiency, mitochondrial growth. And I really want to use this time with you to give you a little bit of information that allows you to make a connection, a deeper connection with your training. Yes, something that will resonate with you when you're in those moments of despair, when you're questioning your sanity because you're bored out your head thinking that this training is not getting me anywhere. Hey folks, before we go, I've borrowed my daughter's chair. Do you like it? Yes, I shall be gaming later. Uh, you can join me on my Discord channel where I, I will be playing uh, Minecraft. <laughs> Only joking. This chair doesn't squeak. It's so fancy. Uh, showing up my age now. Get your glasses on, coach. Hey, you want to follow me on any of the following channels? You can find me Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, the usual nonsense, folks. But make sure you dive in and follow me on uh, my new school page. Hey, before I forget, we better put the warning up. Hey folks, if you're new to the channel, I do have a tendency to go off on a tangent sometimes. My language may become fruity, it may become slightly non-English than what you're expecting, and it will resort back to type, i.e. my Highland, Glaswegian, sweary, Mary. Yes. So, I'm not intending to offend anyone, I'm not picking out anyone in particular. I am quite equally in my offensive language to all people. And I think that's what makes me quite unique. Yes. So please, if there is something that offends you or you're easily offended, please leave now. Okay. Because this is not the channel for you. Sure, you may love cycling. Sure, you may love fitness and training, bike fitting performance. We will cover all that. But it's my intention, especially with this session, because we could go down a wormhole in terms of mitochondrial development. We're going to keep it nice and easy. This is going to be the funnest science lesson you've ever had. Yeah. So take yourself back to school when you were bored out of your head. Yeah. We're going to make it a little bit fun. Boom. Now we've got something else to share and it's all to do with, it's not on my YouTube uh, shelf yet, but it will go, but it's going to be inside school first because everybody inside school is going to get first refusal on this. And we may put a limit of 50 to each t-shirt, but the group helped design, they helped produce the text and hey, We've got our first t-shirts and a big shout out to Floyd Christofferson. Floyd, are you online now? You were the first owner or you will be the first owner of the new Kinetic t-shirts. Yeah. So have a check out. The first one is quite funny. I do like it and I must thank people uh, for putting that together. But these are the first edition of the new Kinetic t-shirts. The link is in the description. They will be available on Fourth Wall and they'll be available inside the school page. Okay, coach, you've plugged enough shit. Can you get on with what you want to talk about tonight? Well, let's start by going through. I'm going to go through a number of topics. So what I want you to do is to think about your own training right now. Think about your own goals. Think about where you are at this phase in your own development, your own training. And then think about life. Where are you in life? Does your life and your fitness match? Does your life and your health match? So remember, if you're joining me new or you don't know much about me, I am a 52-year-old West Scottish laddie. 
okay, but who suffers from a autoimmune disease called ulcerative colitis. This has stripped me of many things over the last decade and a bit. However, it has made the challenge of fitness even more rewarding, okay? So even at my old age, even though I coach all over the world, I'm still doing a little bit of cycling myself and I can still hold my own with people my own age group and I intend to do more as I develop throughout this year. But if you follow me, I share in a lot of that journey. So mitochondrial density, efficiency, growth, health, whatever we want to call it, is super important. Now, when I was introduced to the concept in my early science days and then at late 80s studying sports science, it blew my mind. I want you to think of mitochondrial like the pedals on your bike. So whatever your bike is, no matter how old, how new, how aero, it's not doing anything without the pedals, is it? Oh, you've got an e-bike, don't give me that pish, okay? The pedals, in terms of generating that power, and your mitochondrial is super important. So let's just go through a few things and, uh, yeah. What is it? Your mitochondrial, oh coach, can't even see your head now. Let's make that a bit smaller, okay? Shrink it up there. So I call the mitochondrial, you see they're the party animals, okay? The party animals, they bring everything to a party, but what they want to do is they want to bring out the best in you. So a mitochondrial, okay, what it's gonna do is it plays large amount of roles, uh, cellular function, so it's inside your cell. But what it wants to do is bring the energy out of you. So you turn up at the party and you're thinking, oh, I can't be bothered. I've had a long day at work. I've got to put up with this coat shit pish. What's he going to talk about today? Okay, mitochondria is going to come up and it's going to tickle you. Yeah, it's going to tell you a little joke. It's going to tell you a little dirty joke. It's going to bring a little bit of a smile to your face. It's going to bring a bit of energy to you because you're flat. You've got no energy. You're tired. You've no idea what it is. The mitochondria is going to do this because what it's going to do is it's going to unre it's going to release energy from the bones. And we know that it's going to be working with fat and carbohydrate, what we've got from our diet, and it's going to release energy. So I want you thinking about mitochondrial as we say, it's releasing this what's called ATP, this adenosine triphosphate, this energy. Now, it's actually, believe it or not, releasing about 90% of your ATP. Huge amount, okay? Huge amount. And this is how it gets the name, the powerhouse of the cell. So you probably remember that from high school science, powerhouse of the cell, mitochondria. What does it do? Well, it, this is where internal respiration is occurring. Life itself. And what's essential for life? Oxygen. So we talk about zone two training. So think about that. Oh, what I'm trying to do is to maximize my efficiency, especially by using fat to produce energy and glycogen. The fat is not actually producing much waste products. Okay, but the whole thing is about health. And I want you thinking about that. Okay, so have that clear in your head as we go through the next, say, 20 minutes. Okay, so understand what its role is in basic terms. Okay, and understand that there are factors that are going to affect it that you can implement now, today, after you've watched this session. Now, there are also factors that have been given to you genetically. Okay, so we'll touch upon them, but we're going to do some deeper dive into this within the school page. Anyway, come on, let's get, uh, let's get into it. So what I want to start off with is why is it important to boost mitochondrial? Okay. Well, why do you think? Why do you think it's important? Well, we've just said it's essential for producing ATP. It produces 90% of the body's ATP. So I want you thinking right now, when you're flat, when you've got no energy and you feel very, very tired, what are the drivers that put you there without workouts being put in place? So you, you can't blame it on a long, three-hour, hard, hilly workout. Come on, give me your ideas. Sleep, yep. Sleep, nutrition, poor nutrition. Maybe a night out, maybe too late night, a late night out, a little bit of wine, a little bit of alcohol, a little bit of cocktails, a little bit of boogie, yeah, photocopying your arse. Do people still do that? No, of course they don't. 
what they do now is they uh, make an NFT of their arse and they sell it for cryptocurrency. Yeah, my arse, NFT. I'm going to sell that for about a million dollars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> NFTs at kineticcyclecoaching.com. Get your arse digitalized. Now, what I mean is you've probably got lots of reasons that will make you feel flat. I had a bad night's sleep. The baby was up during the night. Yeah. So there's lots of things that are going to impact on mitochondrial. And this is true. And we're going to touch on a few of them. Okay. But the reason that we want to improve it is that it is a direct link to ability to absorb things that we'll touch on lightly, things like oxidative stress, things like free radicals, dangerous molecules that enter the system daily, every minute, every day, that in increase as we get older. Molecules that are going to destroy healthy cells. The aging process. So if we talk about the aging process, what does that feel like? My joints get stiff. My hair falls out. My hair grows grey. My balls shrivel up. Oh, did I say that? Okay, again, if I've offended anyone, please leave the channel. There is more to come. But things that affect us when we're ageing. Now, our body, you know, it indicates this. The skin loses that flexibility, agility, hydration, wrinkles, etc, etc. Could I go on? Some of you are watching this are probably in your 70s shouting at me thinking, 52, he's a young man. He wants to get to my age when I'm pissing the bed and getting up 15 times a night. Okay, you know the meaning, okay? So what we're talking about is have a look at people who have looked after their health in terms of physical and emotional health. You might think, oh, they don't look their age. Now, I'm not talking about people that have had plastic surgery, people that have had, you know, you know, obviously covered in makeup, etc. But there are things that we can do. So what I want you starting to think of now is mitochondrial training, zone two training is essential. Let's take things like diabetes. Pre-diabetes, patients will, will demonstrate through testing high lactic acid levels in the cells. High lactic acid. I mean, extremely high in some cases. Why is this? Because the mitochondrial efficiency has been disrupted. It becomes what we call dysfunctional. And there is a number of reasons for this. Some of them are actually quite simple. Some of them, yes, are genetic. And we're not going to go down that path. And I'm going to make suggestions, not 100% guarantees, but suggestions that have got evidence that will help you. So think about... The air we breathe and its journey, its pathway. We've talked about this before, like an Amazon package. As we breathe in, that's it, entering the van. Then all along the way, until it's dropped into the blood, the lungs, alveoli, capillaries, hemoglobin. There's so many pathways and connections, but the time it gets to the mitochondrial, okay, we want that pathway smooth as possible and then let it do its job. Now, when we are zone two training, what are we doing? We are using, hopefully, an intensity that sends a stimulus, a neural stimulus to your system that will allow you to dictate that you can deliver the majority or at least half of the energy via fat, okay? So the metabolism of fat at zone two allows the mitochondria to have a workout. Okay, so I want you making that cognitive connection. This is not about developing my muscles, developing my ability to climb a hill, developing my VO2, developing my cardiovascular density. It's about giving my mitochondrial a high five. It's about saying to the little guy, hey, I'll feed you. Yeah, I'll feed you this oxygen. I'll allow you to work with fat. I'll allow you to work with that because I know that you like it. And I know that by making you more efficient, when the day comes and I expose you to the harsh graphic reality of porn, I mean, sorry, lactic acid, you'll be able to remove it, okay? You'll be able to flush it all out the way. I'm sorry about that. You'll be able to flush it out. So we talk about lactic clearance. And it can only do that when it's been given a training session. Just think of your own body. Okay, so you, you're, you're entering a race. Shit, I've done all the wrong type of training. Okay? 
Think about that. You've got to make that connection. So it is essential that we develop mitochondrial efficiency, volume for health reasons. Primary for health reasons that will benefit your fitness. If you're not healthy, you cannot maintain or progress fitness. So your association with a workout needs to be on a par with your association with working out to get healthy. Easy, but it can get confusing a little bit. I do appreciate. I hate zone two training though, coach. It's boring. I don't give a shit what you think about it. Okay. That is one of the most ridiculous phrases I hear. I don't like it. I'm bored. You're cognitively unstimulated by zone two because you don't make a connection with the process. What are you trying to achieve? Think right now about your goals. What you're trying to do. Well, I'm trying to get fitter. So how, how does that happen? Do you like cake? Of course I do. When you're making a cake, do you add sugar? Of course I do, coach. It's one of the ingredients. It's all just sugar. No, 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 no. I have to add other things. Your training must involve a wide, a plethora of items. What we do on the bike may only make up not even 50%. And I'm talking about all your workouts. Not even 50% of your fitness journey. So when you get these moments of, oh shit, I've got to do a zone two training session. I find it so boring. And this is because you haven't got that connection with the intensity, that umbilical cord with no pain, no gain. You've got to remind yourself of the process. Now, what is the process? The process is what you and I share. Okay, not a Scottish accent, not an inability to stop swearing. I've done quite well tonight, I think. But that process of getting fit, that process, that emotional, that aesthetic feeling that we get, that connection with the workout. Sorry, I keep hitting my microphone. It must sound terrible. That connection we get with the workout, the process of going through that, that is what you have that is your special superpower. And you forget that sometimes so easily. So you dial in, this is a workout for my health. So this is a workout that will improve my mitochondrial density. This means I can therefore access a higher number of workers who will turn up at parties to unleash energy from all the boring shits that turn up at my party. This will allow me to get more energy at rest, more energy during those moments when I'm fatigued because mitochondrial produce 90% of your body's ATP. ATP is your energy system. You get it? So if, you're a, if your mitochondrial are becoming dysfunctional, and I'll give you a few reasons why they might be in a second, that's why you're flat. Now, when are you at your worst? Come on, think. I'm not going to give you the answers yet. When are you at your worst when you're feeling, shit, I got no energy whatsoever. Man, what a day. Yeah? Think about that. And think about why that is happening, okay? Because the dysfunction of the mitochondrial happens in multiple ways, okay? So forget that bullshit that you're bored you're making a misconnection with what you're trying to achieve. So if you've got children, go and look at them after this podcast. Go and look at them and say, do you know what, son, daughter, your father's speaking here. I don't care if they're two or three years old. Make this speech really, you know, powerful to them. Your dad's been a bit of an asshole, right? I've not been making the connection with his own two trainer. All I've been interested is pushing my power curve, pushing my FTP, pushing my VO2. So I've disregarded zone two. So actually, I've not really been developing my mitochondrial, which has therefore limited my ability to produce ATP on a day-to-day -day basis, has limited my ability to deal with the stress of oxidative stress, the increase in free radicals in my system. So I've been killing my, my cells, son, which means I'm probably going to die younger. And I'm going to leave you with a legacy of the mortgage I'm not going to pay, my credit cards for all the bikes that I've got. And for God's sake, if you ever find out how much those wheels cost, you'll probably spit on my grave. A bit harsh, a bit too much? Okay, a bit too much. Right, but think about that. So you're bored with training zone two. Are you bored with uh, trying to promote your health? Try and slow down the aging process because that's what mitochondria do, Okay. That's what they've got the potential to do, okay? Yeah, 
Bit too much, coach. Sorry. You get my drift, though. Okay, what about this? I want you thinking about this. Do your limits extend beyond training zones? Do your limits extend beyond training zones? What, what the hell does that mean, coach? This is something, again, within the school university, you're going to get your first course on limits and how they are placed on you, whether they are genetic, whether they are geographical, whether they are influenced by your postcode, whether they are influenced by your friends, your work colleagues, or your ambitions. Lots of reasons. We break through them and we create our new limits. However, lots of athletes, just like you, are controlled by training zones. Well, coach, that's my limit. That's my zone. That's where I've got to work to. Okay, let me tell you this. Do you set training zones at work? Too right I do, coach, because soon as the minute that buzzer goes or I'm finished work, I'm fucking out that door. I ain't giving the big man one more minute of my time. How dare he try and hold me back? The limits that we have are placed on us in all areas. However, there should be no limits up here. So I'm diving deeper into your mindset. What is it that's pushing you? What is it that's motivating you? Because if it is an event, if it is a race, then you're screwed. Because what's going to happen in that event is it's unlikely that you'll hit your secret goal because you're too, too, sorry, you're too, not chew, you're too chicken shit to share your secret goal. So you're only going to share the global goal. So therefore, you're in trouble because you're going to be frustrated anyway. Now, even in the pro game, how many are ever going to win a race? How many are going to win more than one race in a year? Less than 1% of the peloton, probably. So how do, we, how do we create success and failure? So when we're looking at training zones, how do we zone out our life? How do we make that connection with improving our health, improving our emotional health? Are you getting an idea of what's destroying your mitochondrial function? I think you are, okay? So I want you thinking beyond training zones because I've told you that not even 50% of your fitness journey is based on workouts. It just doesn't happen. Those of you who are like me that are in a lifelong journey will have peaks and troughs of your fitness. We will have what's called a perma fitness. And when we get perma fitness right, we will have enough freshness to do blocks of training, three, four weeks of hard training and get a spike that will allow us to ascertain, to gain, to access higher levels of fitness than anyone our age. And then we'll fall back down to our perma fitness, which allows us to function at a higher VO2 max than the average person for our age, our gender, etc. Only if the bulk of our training focuses on the health of our mitochondria. So, do you want to talk about a few little things? Now, I'm going to talk about some things that I use. These are not based entirely around science. However, I am going to talk about a method that will give some of you a little bit of a Viagra boost, okay? Because you'll be thinking, oh, oh, he's going to talk about that. I'm not, okay? What I mean is the calorie clock. Now, what I mean by the calorie clock is some forms of intermittent fasting. So let's look at the mitochondria and let's look at ways that we can impact on its health. Now, I do intermittent fasting over a timed period to cleanse and rest my gut because of my ulcerative colitis. Now, there is no proven evidence, okay, that it directly impacts on mitochondrial health. However, it has an effect. Nobody knows exactly why at the moment, but I've got, you know, there's enough research to suggest that there is something going on in terms of its ability, okay, to increase its ability to deal with oxidative stress. Now, it's a little bit complex and it deals with uh, areas of inflammation that are left due to the volume of calories in the system. So I want to make it quite simple. But however, do you want to know my system? So here's what I have to go through. So the calorific clock is when do you start eating? When do you finish eating? So we are awake for what? 16, 18 hours. You get that a volume of time to live. Okay. It's not a day in my head. It's a lifetime because who knows what's going to happen tomorrow. You've got to take every single hour. I know that sounds like an old hippie. You don't know what's out there tomorrow, son. Okay. How are you going to live, John? Day by day. <laughs> I love Rambo. But the thing is, okay, you've got to take each day, like, literally, 
as the last day there is, okay? So 16 to 18 hours. Generally, that's my day. Now, if I'm up at six o'clock, I have some days which are what I call the 12 hour day. So the moment I have my first item to eat, there'll be a 12 hour period. That's my normal range, 12 hours. You can do the same, okay? So think right now, what, what is your calorific clock like at the moment? Is it the same Monday to Friday? Because remember, your body's looking for efficiency, it's looking for homeostasis, steady state. Wants to stay the same. So let's say you are on a journey to lose weight. I am not on a journey to lose weight, okay? I'm a journey to get healthier or manage a condition that has quite a dramatic impact on my life on a day-to-day -day basis. So what happens is if we reduce the calories, okay? There is an impact on the mitochondria in terms of its function, but it still creates the same ATP levels. Now, I know that might sound confusing, but it can still produce the same ATP, even though there are less calories in the system. Now, for most people, that is because there is so much shit still in their system anyway. But what we are doing is using fuel that's already there. Now, we are not going to cross over and talk about, oh, can I do exercise while I'm fasting? No, I'm talking about hours of the day where I will eat. And then what I do is I limit the ends of days, the start and the end. Okay, so the periphery. Because after my 12 hour, I will do a 10 hour. And then the least I do is one time a week, I do an eight hour active eating period. Okay, so that eight hour obviously gives me a bigger window at the opposite ends of the day, whereby I'm not eating. And that allows my system to use up what it's got and rest. Now, this is also linked to a couple of other things we'll talk about in terms of the nervous system. Now, this works for me. Now, I have also tried this system with a number of clients and moved the days around, okay? And it has helped them with weight loss. Now, I can't tell you that this is something that you need to do. But if you are struggling with weight loss, if you are struggling with energy and you want to make your step one into impacting on your mitochondrial health, you can try it. And I would say, try and do the whole week on a 12 hour schedule. Then the following week, you have 12 hours and you do two days at 10 hours. On the third week, you do everything at 12, two days at 10, one day at eight. So you've got four days at 12, two at 10, one at eight. Just see how it goes. Now, here's something else that's important that a lot of people don't understand when they're talking about intermittent fasting and how it's helped them lose weight. Because it, it does, it does help them, okay? But what you've got to understand is your body seeks steady state. So let's say you follow a program and you do the same thing. Your body will work you out. So what you need to then do is if you've been doing, say, eight hours, you need to go back to 10 or 12 because you need to increase the calories to upset the body's rhythm of working out the steady state and then go back. So you jump up and down. So it's almost like doing a variable workout. Those of you who follow me will understand variable workouts, okay? So that's really, really important. Now, where did Fat for Fuel come, coach? Over 10,000 people downloaded it and so many people had great results. Because if you think about it, if we exercise for a low amount of time and we just tickle into zone three on low carb, so I would do these normally not on a 12 hour day, but on a 10 or even sometimes an eight hour day. And that would make up my golden hour. When I wake up, I would do the workout and it would be done before I eat. So there would have been a period of fasting before. This allowed me to rinse the system out, use what was there, but also tap into fat metabolism. Do you get the idea? Because even if we do zone two, and I would tickle into zone three, because my idea was if I did it at zone three, I could capture most people, because most people would have something to eat later on at night. I know that they would be lying to me. But the idea was, even if you do zone two, you're tapping in more okay, to not only potential increase in fat metabolism, but you're also possibly reaching a wider recruitment of muscle fibers that you're not getting in your normal workout. 
okay? Because you're well fueled. Now, I do not sign up uh, for doing high intensity training uh, of fasted. I do not sign up for changing your fueling habits when you've got races and events because as soon as we're hitting threshold people vo2 you are 100 percent delivering energy from glycogen you've got to understand that okay and the science is a little bit sketchy for the reasons why this works but if we look at the ability to decrease inflammation from lower volumes of calories at extended periods of the day i.e night time this is beneficial. Your brain produces a molecule that's quite toxic as well. And that's why when we talk about sleep, we have to make sure we are resting well. I'll give you a couple of reasons and suggestions for that. So I'm not leaving any notes on that. You can watch this back and you can talk. And again, within the school page, we're going to do a course on my 1210 cycle that I use that I have found incredibly beneficial. I can still ride three, four hours. I will fuel sensibly when I'm out on the bike, okay? And for anyone who's watching this who has, who does suffer from Crohn's or colitis, this has helped me just in periods whereby I've got other conditions that impact, one of them being a very lazy bowel, okay? So I've got to be super careful, right? So I'm giving you information from the heart here. This is personal to me, but it does work, okay? So if you want to start that journey, that's a good a good way to start. Think of your calorific clock. Okay, right. So what about Scottish exposure training days, I call them. So one of the main functions of development of mitochondrial efficiency is temperature changes, cold and warm. We concentrate on cold. So let's say you've done your 12 hour, your 10 hour calorific clock You've woke up in the morning, you're going to do your little 30 minute zone two into zone three workout. You're then going to go and have your shower. You know I'm going to say warm shower, then cold shower. The exposure to cold has such a fantastic uh, impact on your neurological system and your physiological system. Okay, so from your breathing to your cardiovascular density, your capillary density, this increases your oxygen carrying capacity, but it also is much healthier for the mitochondria because it has an effect on the inflammatory system. If we can reduce oxidative stress in the system, we therefore give ourselves a better chance at dealing with the aging process that increases in what we term the free radicals that exist in the system, okay? Cold water works, okay? It definitely works. From that shock to the system when you have to suck in a deep breath, that is a, an assault on your neurological system. That is a laser beam through your spinal cord right into the core of your brain. There is almost like a nuclear explosion, okay? And that release of the hormone effect there is massively important because you've got to understand that your mitochondrial, have you heard me talk about activation? Maybe you've done an activation session and you've thought, what the fuck is an activation session? Okay, what is, you know, a prime session? What am I actually doing? And what does deactivation really mean? Is it something from fucking Mission Impossible? Is my arse going to deactivate if I don't go on my bike? What you've got to understand is, how do all these things exchange? How do they move around? How does something get out the mitochondria? How does ATP actually get created? What's going on? Well, there are things called enzymes. There are enzymes that are transporting, like beavers running about your system. And when we have got highly efficient mitochondrial, the mitochondrial enzymes are very active and they're very healthy and they're doing their job. So what we've got to understand is that is key. In activation sessions, like activation through cold water, it helps the production and the maintenance of these enzymes. Okay, an enzyme will change the rate of a chemical reaction. Yes, yeah, speed it up, slow it down. So it's absolutely essential. Now, can you also see I know it's sometimes a bit complex, but can you also see that there is a knock-on effect? So you're thinking, shit, what workout should I do? Or should I do the cold one? It doesn't fucking matter. That's the thing. It doesn't really matter where you start because if you can do one thing, one thing now, that has a knock-on effect. If I could advise anyone to do one thing in terms of starting the mitochondrial journey, it would be the cold showers. It would be start to get your body acclimatized and take 10 to 14 days to get up to two 
minute shower, at the end of a hot shower. Do that every single day for the rest of your life. For the rest of your life, okay? Because not only will it improve your cardiovascular density, it'll improve your mindset. It will actually take you to a place that's outside your comfort zone. And by doing that at least once a day, and even only for the first 10 seconds when the cold water hits your skin, that is something worth doing. Be because by going outside your comfort zone, you will change the limits. You will change the limits that you've already feel oppressed by. You'll change the limits that you've set on your own life. You'll change the limits that you think other people judge you by, which is a load of bollocks because it's only you that judges yourself by them and you're comparing yourself with others. Go outside that comfort zone and just have a little peek into the attic space of your mindset. I mean, you will never, ever look back. Okay, other things that I want to talk about. Yeah, heat, but we'll spend another video talking about heat and how it can help. You've probably heard me talk about the, you know, the benefits of a hot bath or a sauna for 20 minutes compared to, say, a 20-minute spin in zone one on your, your, your bike. <laughs> heat can have an amazing effect on mitochondrial as well. Okay, but not everybody's got access to heat. Nearly everybody's got access to cold water shower. So I would start with that. So after this, you're going to do cold water shower every single day. You're going to have a little look at maybe calorie-fying your clock when you start time, when your, your finish time is to eat. And inside that, one thing I didn't emphasize enough, what I do is I try and deliberately level out calorie intake. And very few people are able to do that because that takes time. That takes a, a big habit change. And what I mean by that is you're probably saying to me, oh, fuck, I can go without breakfast anyway. That's easy. Well, it's not. It's not smart. It's not essential. But what you don't go without is probably eating like a bear who's about to go into hibernation from about 4 p.m. onwards. That's not good. So what I mean is you're therefore loading up your calories or you're trying to squeeze them all in. Coach says don't eat after 7 o'clock. I didn't. I said create a calorific clock. That may finish at 9 o'clock for some people. Okay? It's about having those periods whereby you're calorific deficient, but you're also spreading out calories in an equal way. That's impossible for some people to do in the evening, I hear. Oh, I can't do that. You know, I have a three-course meal every night. My wife makes it for me. If it's not made for me, I'm filing for a divorce. What a wanker. Okay, you can't do that, right? Divorce. <laughs> I'm talking about three course at one time. And you're trying to spread it out. So we may then therefore have six meals. So I talk about the double breakfast often. We talk about the six meals. Talk about smaller meals more often. Trying not to go hungry. Trying to graze. Yeah, trying to graze. I mean, we're talking about a massive golf swing change of habits for a lot of people. But can you do one thing out of that? Is there one thing that you can do? Because I mean, you're going to get such a benefit. And remember where we started here, we're training our health. And this will impact on the aging process. Now, something else that will massively impact on it is our ability, excuse me, while I try and kiss the sky. Okay. Oh no, sorry. That was another thing. Got a funny story about that. It's in my head, Jimi Hendrix, because I heard somebody shout at their kid the other day. This is such a Scottish thing. By the way, we're going to do a little video on extension of how to survive the UCI World Championships in Glasgow 2023 and how to speak Scottish. But also what you've got to get used to when you come to Glasgow is there will be a lot of shouting at children. We still do it. No, we don't hit children. That's illegal. No, we don't smack. Okay, not in public anyway. But we shout at children because children don't know what they're doing. They don't know. They've got to come closer to us. And there's usually an F word in there. But I heard one woman do this to a particular boy who was more interested looking in the toy shop than the female clothing shop. You know, how dare he? You know, six-year-old boy. And she shouted out to them, get your F and arse over here, Hendrix. Yeah, there you go. Anybody else? I apologise if anyone out there has got their child and they called them Hendrix. First name, that is. So I was thinking, you know, this is probably after Jimmy Hendrix. Maybe, maybe, maybe the son of a lovely, passionate evening. Uh, down by uh, Greenock or something, you know, and they were having, you know, passionate love just off Port Glasgow, watching the Gurick Ferry go over, you know, into the sunset, and uh, Jimi Hendrix was playing. Or it was because they were drinking Hendrix gin that they probably nicked out the back of the spa. You never know. Who knows? But yeah, watch out for the course on how to survive the Glasgow uh, World Championships. Now, what I want to talk about now is 
Let's put all that together and let's do one thing. Let's talk about the parachute or the para word in terms of sympathetic. Are you parasympathetic to your nervous system or are you sympathetic? The ability for us to make those movements between the two systems is probably the biggest game changer that people can make. Now, remember I asked you that question, what happens? When are the days when you've got no energy? You come home, you sit in the chair and you fall asleep watching whatever shit's on. You don't even get through your dinner. Then you wake up and you eat the bear's amount of food before you go into hibernation. Stress. Yeah? You've got deadlines at work. You've got problems. You've got no solutions for these problems. You've got a million and one problems, but the bike ain't one. But the thing is, it builds up. And our inability to deal with this stress does have an effect on your cortisol, your oxidative stress. What's dealing with oxidative stress? Well, we've got lactic clearance happening where? Mitochondrial. Fuck, this mitochondrial gets everywhere, doesn't he? I mean, he is life. He is the pedals to your bike. So keep making these connections. I'm not bored. I'm getting healthy. I'll never be bored again, coach. I promise you, please don't whip me. Please don't lock me in chains. Okay? That's how important it is. Once you can make those connections. So the ability to leave and exit stress is unbelievably essential. Now, you'll hear other people on YouTube say, we're going to meditate. We're going to do this breathing exercise. I'm not going to do any of that with you. You're smart enough to understand when you are under stress. But when you're under stress, what's happening? There you are creating a reaction that is dysfunctional to the health of the mitochondria. You're impacting on the enzymes. You're impacting on what we term its cellular function through stress. Because the stress increases markers in the system that have the opposite effect to what the mitochondria is trying to do. You're killing it off. You're damaging the cell. You're increasing free radicals at a phenomenal rate. Have you taken a new job on recently? Have you increased your stress? Has your hair fallen out? Is your hair going grey? Have your testicles shriveled up? Okay. Have they? Have you aged dramatically recently? Watch anyone in sport who takes on, moves from a player to a coach in any sport. My God. Don't they half age very quickly? But the whole thing is about being able to deal with that. So you need mechanisms. So a lot of people say, hey, I use my bike coach. I get out of my bike and I'm stress-free. That sometimes is not the way, is it? If you think about it, you go for a stressful ride because you act by putting intensity in. You just haven't got it because the ATP production has been affected because you've got dysfunctional metrics in your system that are fucking up your mitochondrial. Okay? So that ability, remember we talk about protein intake after a ride, and I say, don't do it, because your nervous system is not geared, it's not set up to accept an increase in blood flow to your gut. Wait, wait, wait. Like in Braveheart, hold, hold. Imagine loads of people holding big bottles of protein shake. Hold, hold. Hold for two hours, please, and then drink that protein shake, but ideally have it in protein solid form. <laughs> but the whole thing is about the nervous system and how it switches on and off from parasympathetic to sympathetic. If you want to do some homework before now and next week, or you're going to join me in the school page, go and Google parasympathetic and sympathetic and learn. Even when we do some of the live workouts, and I'm talking about breathing drills, it's super important breathing through your nose, out through your mouth, when we're trying to recover, and we're trying to get more oxygen in, but we're trying to relax, okay? As a bike fitter, one of the things that I see most common in a lot of riders, especially when their bike doesn't fit, is the over grip, the over tighten, the over tense. We interfere with what's called lactic flushing because you've got muscles under tremendous stress for no reason, okay? Relax, it's so important. So where are the moments in the day that you can relax? You've got your cold shower, you've got your 12, 10, 8 hour calorific uh, days. You've got your workouts in zone two. Where are you relaxing? Where are you finding that time to create solutions to problems? And that's important because not all problems have solutions. But remember, if they haven't got a solution, it's not a problem. You deal with it. How many times do you complain about variables that are out of your control? 
Okay? Do you create limits already via non-controllable variables? Oh, it's okay for the coach sitting there. He weighs 64 kilograms. What a prick. It's all right for him. Yeah. Is that you? Oh, it's okay for him. He can turn up on his aero carbon bike. I've got to turn up on my fucking granny's bike with panniers that weighs 15 kilograms heavier than his left leg. Oh, it's okay for him. I'm 20 years older. Oh, it's okay for him. <laughs> Get it? Oh, yeah, well, he won that event because X, Y, Z. Yeah, oh, he was lucky. Are you the type of person that looks at sport on TV? The referee's shit. That was a terrible decision. You use variables that are out of your control all your time. It's because you've set limits on your own expectations. So you blame others for your position. Don't blame them for where your mitochondrial is. Because you can impact on it. And that will impact on your health. So, if you are a little bit stressed out, what are you going to do about it? Because it's in your hands. Because again, I'm going to make you go and stand in front of your children and say, I'm sorry, kids, I didn't hit that deadline at work today. I was a little bit stressed out because I was on TikTok on the toilet for a little bit longer. The, bo the, boy sh the boss shouted at me. So I've got a little bit stressed and I've, I've killed off a few thousand mitochondria, which is actually going to limit my ATP production, which probably is going to take about six months off my life. Okay, I don't know when, but, you know, I promise you I'll get rid of that debt before I pop my clogs. All these things have an action, have a reaction as well. So I want you thinking about, oh, I'm only training for 12 weeks before this bloody sport thief, then I don't have to listen to him again. No, you're not. It's lifelong. And what you've got to understand as well is every single day does not mean you get a dopamine release from the workout you do. It doesn't have to bring immediate gratification, okay? Every action you do, I'm punching my microphone again, I get so excited. Every action you do may not see a development for three, six months. But the more you act, the more you react. And if those actions are good, the consequential reactions, I think I just made up a word there, are good. If your actions are bad, you're more likely to have negative reactions. And if your actions are are bad, but you think they're good, then you're fucked. And what I mean by that is you've convinced yourself, this is who I am, this is all I can do, we'll keep just doing this. That's a bad place to be in. And I talk about you may not listen to me, you may not have to listen to me, you may not take on all my advice. But what I'm saying is taking on information, just because it doesn't hit your niche, it doesn't actually play with you, it doesn't resonate with you, doesn't mean that it's not there for a reason. Many people who get to my age, over 50, over 60, they become so narrow, close-minded. They're fixed on what they know, what they do. Let me tell you this, that 99% of our routine will be replicated day in, day out. It's very hard to get people to change. There's very few people like me in their 50s. And I hope that if you listen to me and follow me maybe, you can open up new opportunities, okay? Because every day should be an opportunity to learn something new, okay? I learned yesterday in horse racing, a sport I don't know much about, that a hurdle, H-U-R-D-L-E, I say it because I know my accent makes it sound funny, a hurdle is a lower obstacle than a fence. A horse that jumps a hurdle is a young horse. There you go. Thought I would throw that in. Okay, so let me talk a little bit now about the final thing, because now we're bastard stress. What about mitochondrial nutrients, coach? Now, I don't want to spend too much time in this, okay, because uh, mitochondrial nutrients, they range. There's lots of them, okay? Lots and lots of them. And I'm going to give you a few. Let me just pin a few up here. I've lost the actual mouse. Give me a second. Because I'm going to talk about one specifically, okay? There you go. I've put it on the sheet, uh, the screen there, so you can write a few things down. Now, the one that really plays a big role, especially in my life, is the vitamin, uh, the B vitamins, but especially vitamin B three. Okay, vitamin B three is something that plays a big role for me. Oh, look at that! Can you see the coach there? Double camera. 
Yeah. Vitamin B3, for me, plays a big role. You want to see it again? Sorry. Okay, so you'll hear me talk a lot about uh, nuts and seeds, seafood and meat. Now, not everybody's going to be eating meat, okay? But obviously, what mitochondrial nutrients are doing is, have a guess, they're impacting on the enzyme activity. So they, they maintain a healthy enzyme activity for the mitochondrial. Now, you are boosting the mitochondrial through exercise, mainly through your zone two training. How about sprint training? Do you think it works? Anybody done my cell buster workouts? Okay, so we're going to be talking about cell buster workouts. How much fuel in the cell? Five to seven seconds? You know that, I've already told you that. What about if we expose that to a, an immediate uh, explosion? We, we create a nuclear reaction and we, we blow it up, but we don't do any more. And we just expose our system to a complete emptying of that stored fuel that's in the cell. Hmm, interesting. So we're going to look at that. That's another form of workout that we can use and we can do them in a short period of time, 30, 40 minutes. And we only need to maybe do three or four of them. Oh, sounds good, coach. Yep. We'll talk about that in another session. But what I mean is the nutrients are helping the enzymes. So there'll be people already thinking, oh shit, I can add that into my diet. Don't go crazy. Remember, one action has a reaction and will have a systemic approach. You cannot improve one area without it having a natural improvement in other areas. Think about things like you know, my wife is fascinated by property and people who develop their property. If you look at any street, one person comes in, puts a new, decorates their garden, puts something nice up. You'll see another person, maybe three houses down. Hey, that looks quite nice. I might do something the same. And suddenly you've got a whole street engaging on. We call it in the UK, keeping up with the Joneses. I don't know why. Somebody may tell me. But it has that knock-on effect. So if you do one thing, like, I'm going to increase my zone two, I'm not going to get bored again, coach. I've actually got time for 90 minutes, three times a week, not 60 minutes. I'm going to increase it because you've just enlightened me. Because I've got children, I don't want to have that conversation with them. Because I do have a large porn collection in the attic I need to get rid of before I pop my clogs. What if it's tomorrow? Okay? That's a true story. I tell you about a lawyer. And that was his wish that he left for me if anything happened to him when he was at work. It was to remove his porn collection from his bedroom so his mother didn't find it. What a fucking wanker. True story. <laughs> anyway, I apologise about that. I forget sometimes that I'm live on YouTube. Do you forgive me? Please, forgive me. But the whole idea is one thing will lead to another. Positive actions create reactions. Have a little look at what you did yesterday or I think. What did you do the day before that? Today's Monday as I push this podcast out. What did you do last Monday? Well, I listened to you, coach. Okay, but did your routine follow a similar pattern? Do you eat similar meals and similar days? What you're trying to do is make sure that you're able, you're brave enough, strong enough, creative enough to change things around. Have your routine that's your core, your spine, but then be flexible and introduce new ways. Okay? I mean, it's phenomenally powerful. I could give you 100 ways to change your day. Should we do that? We'll do that in school. Easy little things that could change the outcomes that you have and especially change the limits that you've placed on yourself. Okay, so think of those nutrients. If you're not aware of where vitam vitamin, vitamin? vitamin B3 is, just have a little search, okay, and you'll find it. And it's probably in your diet, but now you're making that connection with the meals. Hey, maybe the thing you take from this is I'm going to I'm gonna go for 10 hours a day. I'm going to see if I can lose that stubborn five to six pounds that I've not been able to, to lose. Try it. But you're going to level out your meals. So you're going to break the habit. Give yourself a week or two to break the habit of having all your calories later on in the day. Maybe you have them earlier. Okay. Folks, I could talk about this topic, okay, a lot, okay, a lot, right? And uh, zone two training is something that is gets confused. People call it base training. I'm going to build a base. If you think about the 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 ludicrousy of such a phrase, build a base for what? A base so that we can put harder, higher sessions. 
Does anybody actually question that? And what does it mean? Well, it means developing your cardiovascular density because uh, I can only get my VO2 to a certain level. That's bollocks. Central delivery of oxygen for VO2, the peripheral delivery of oxygen for VO2 changes. Okay, and you can develop that a great deal. It's very trainable even for a pro. In fact, that's why they cheat and take drugs because they're deliberately interfering with the periphery, the delivery via hemoglobin, red blood cells, all these things that are carrying the oxygen, getting it in through your mouth and such and up your nose. It's not a problem. It's in the atmosphere, but your capacity to manage it when it's in there, to use it. Because all your mitochondrial is doing is using the available fuel with oxygen to create energy. Energy that is going to move something called the electron transport system. Okay, think of protons. Most of you will probably have a good understanding of science. And if we can keep the pathway as healthy as possible. So maybe you live in a country that gets a lot of snow, but your country functions so much better than a country that gets a little bit of snow suddenly. Oh my God, one inch of snow and the whole country comes to a standstill. Whereas some countries can live with 20 foot because the pathways, the transport links, the com communication, everything works at a higher level. That's what you're trying to do with your fitness. One action creates a reaction and that will have a massive impact. And I would try everything because you don't know genetically what's more sensitive to you. One thing will work for some more than others. It's that simple. But I would keep at the core of your workout-based training at least 80% zone 2 work in a weekly schedule, at least where you can, okay? And remember, workouts may not only, may be less than 50% of your workout, your fitness journey, okay? The other work. Is that enough? I don't even know what time we've been on for an hour. Oh, that boy can talk, okay? That boy can talk. Right, okay. I saw some super chat going in. Okay. Uh, Sidewinder, you've just left. Uh, wow. Currently 18.6 fast. My first 60 mile. Hey, I really thank you. I love it. Okay, so I've worked with athletes uh, who worked through Ramadan. Uh, I've obviously been a coach at different levels as well with juniors uh, and older athletes through that. And it's been, yeah, quite rewarding watching them. I really thank you for that kind donation. Joe Rayner as well, okay? Thank you very much for the super chat. Yeah, I really, I really, really appreciate it. And Joe, 1000% parasympathetic. The struggle is real. It is. We're going to do more talk on that because I've got some solutions for you. Tomorrow, one o'clock. So we're less than what, you know, I get nervous. I've got hospital. So we're going to talk about a few things. I'm going to put it in school, what's happened. A couple of other things. The Zwift Hub has done to me as well. Mm, interesting. I'm going to go and see an expert and just make sure that my uh, prediction is correct. I'll share it. You'll be interested in it. It's all to do with pedaling efficiency and how it impacts on your pelvis. Yeah, but we'll put that in school. Okay, folks, can I just remind you if you are interested that we do have the t-shirts, okay? If you're interested, and I may put a limit on that. We're going to do some little promotions of certain ones that the community are going to create. I do urge you, if you are wanting to engage with me more, I am tidying up and funneling my communications into school. Okay, so we will have a kinetic school page. It's totally free. And then we will have a university page where there'll be a small fee because there's lots of live Q, weekly Q&As, uh, weekly live workouts, hot seating exercises, motivational weekly videos, lots of stuff going on. And there is a university level nutrition course that I'm going to share with you along with lots of mindset and bike fitting courses. Okay, so that's not for everyone, but it's there all the same. Okay, I hope you have enjoyed that chat. And if you've got any questions, etc., Send them through to me. I've been on long enough now and I'm going to break this podcast up into smaller sections and then release them so that you can just bite size. However, if there is something that you really want me to talk about and go into a little bit deeper, hey, get in touch with me, okay? I really do appreciate 
the community and the journey we are on. Can we have a look at who is on? We have got 174 people on live. We've only got 69 thumb buttons. Can you hit the thumb button for me, please? Okay, it's more important than subscribing to the channel. 72% of people who watch my channel are unsubscribed. Okay, are you scared that someone will come and get you for watching my channel? <laughs> hey, just hit that thumbs up button because it helps YouTube then send the message to other people because I'm here to share, okay? It's very unlikely that the video will get monetized anyway because my language falls into that sort of grey area and I do apologize for that, okay? So I do appreciate the people who have sent the super chats. It all goes towards the channel. We are looking in terms of developing the studio and making it much more bespoke for capturing more videos, okay? And I want to share that journey as well. Hey, we're at 96. I'm not going off until that goes over 100 likes, okay? So please, keep hitting that thumbs up button because I'm just going to talk about nonsense, okay? Anybody uh, who is unaware of my seriousness about doing the UCI challenge to teach you some phrases that not only can you use in cycling, but it will also create some ripples in Scotland. Did you know for such a small country, we're probably coast to coast, we could do it in about 150 miles, and we've only got about four and a half million people, but we speak about 54 languages in Scotland. All of them are claimed to, to be a form of English. I mean, they're further from English than you could ever imagine, and myself, I'm half Hebridean, half Glaswegian, born and brought up in Ayrshire with 25 years living in Essex, London. Mm, it's quite a combination, coach. Hey, we're over 100. We can shut up now. Hey, folks, as always, thank you very much. Use the link. Get me in school. I'll let you in. But remember, you have to answer the questions. The system is community-based. It doesn't allow you if you don't answer the questions. If you're on your mobile phone, they're at the side. Search. They pop up. Okay, give it a chance. Hey, folks, take care. I'll see you soon. Get in touch if you've got any questions, please.